Hey, I'm Van. Oh, it's temporarily a beautiful day in Sturgis, South Dakota. Well, it's always beautiful, but sometimes it's sunny and sometimes it's raining like hell. Today it's been both. I got some time and I finally got a place and I'm set up and I'm pushing forward on my next project that I wanted to get done, which is this thing right here. Now, if you look closely, that's just a plain metal blank that goes onto a lighter. It's even got a bottom so the lighter don't fall out or nothing. So I don't have to do any lighter on the bottom and that can never wear out. And the beads, they're on this form. So if you wanted to, once you get it all beaded, you could seal it up and protect the beads and the whole thing a lot longer. Pretty cool. The other thing is I think it'll help out with some other things I want to try, some other different weaving patterns that are still tubular peyote. But that's for another show. In the meantime, let's see how this thing looks. Let's get to it. All right, there we go. Look at that. Do you know what that is? That's 48 beads. And you know, it's maybe a little too big. Maybe. But I tell you what, you get a slack when you first start out anyway. It's going to tighten up when we start putting the weave in. So that is so freaking awesome. I can't tell you. Yes, I can. Maybe I'll tell you afterwards. But right now, just know that if you've been watching my shows at all, 48 is a very nice number for repeating patterns. And I know just the thing I want to do for the first one, because guess what? I've lost all my freaking personal lighters as part of the adventure. Sturgis. You just keep taking so I can give some more. And I want to give this one a whirl. Let's get to it. Okay, so I pulled it back off the form. There's no point because when you put down your first set of beads, it just opens up really huge like this. And it's a big pain. So uh, there's no point in having it on the form here. But now that we're going to lay down our second row, it's going to tighten it right back up again. And we're going to have to keep it on the form from here on out. So we're committed to a direction and everything at this point. So one thing about working on a form that's very different is it stops looking like a train wreck almost immediately on the second row. But the other part is that you need to tighten up right away. So I've already tightened up some, but essentially you've got your trailing edge right here, and you just hold it with your thumb, and then you start wrapping around like this, tight and pulling it. And as it goes around the form, it'll start tightening up, and you'll see this wrapping thing happen, but it, it gets on there just the way you want it. Uh, I'm going to do my regular rainbow logo with the, just the, the bars, so i got to pick out 13 colors and all that other stuff, but instead of doing uh, a repeating pattern of 6, I'm going to go ahead and do a repeating pattern of 8, so they're going to be fatter bars moving up the sides, and there's only going to be 6 of them instead of 7, and that's what I could. I could have done the other way. I could have said, well, I'll do a repeating pattern of 6, and I'll have 8 of those guys, but I wanted to see what the fatter one looks like right away. Eight. I've been wanting to do an eight. Oh my gosh. Awesome. So here we are working our way up and you can see that that 48 is on there. 48 beads for two rows is working out just excellent. We're getting a good solid set of bars going on. I think we're just about a little over halfway on the palette. I do have an imbalance problem in my palette is that I got way more cool colors than warm. That seems to be just how the beads work out. And the warm colors I do have, you know, it's like pinks. Come on, man. Ah, oh, there's a time and a place for pink, but it's not here. So, yeah, it's moving right along. The only thing you got to worry about on these forms is, uh, and I'm left-handed, so I'm going this way on the form. I suppose if you were right-handed, you would be going the other way, you know. One tip I'll point out is you do tend to have a problem where you can accidentally, when you pull through, you'll loop around like that when you try to pull tight. So keep one finger, I use the middle finger, <laughs> why not, and uh, I keep it hard up against the lip here so the, the string has to actually go around my finger and then I can feel it because, uh, you know, I'm just uh, not quick enough to pick up that it's going to do that when I start tightening and that helps me uh, just flip it over and it tightens up. Alright, so we got the uh, beating all done. We can talk about the results and maybe look at it a little closer in a bit, but I want to get on and start laying down the varnish. So, we got some stuff left over some, from some other work we did. Here it is. 
Marine Spar Varnish. Man of War. Hell yeah. Uh, bottom line is it's polyurethane. And uh, it's available. <laughs> so we got that. And we got us a little brush. Then we need a paintbrush and a lot of patience. Because what we don't want to do is make a bunch of drools and things like that. So we just take this little paintbrush and we're just going to paint it on. So I got to mix this stuff up and start doing coats on this. This is where my lack of dexterity comes in, but I want to get it on the beads and not on to the lip very much. So I'll have to be careful on that. And that's really all there is to it. Just start glooping it in there until it layers up. And if we get it all the way outside to where the beads are totally covered with a few coats, I think that will really lend to the protection of the piece and it will last a lot longer. Oh, gross. Ah, I hate that. Got to seal it up good or you get freaking the blob. All right, so we tried that other finish and it didn't work worth a damn, especially because it takes six hours. So between coats. So we're going to use this stuff here. Thought out polyurethane. Heavy use formula. Scratch resistance. Easy soap and water cleanup. And it's two hours of coat. Wow. So it took quite a few days and quite a few coats with that stuff. But look at that effect. It is sealed in there. You can see it's, it's almost glossy. On the, on the surface. You can still feel a little bit of the bead texture here and there, especially on the sides. I was not able to get a good coat all the way around, just the way that I held it and everything. So there's some learning to do on this, but the principle of sound is that uh, you can use one of these metal lighter blanks, find them online, bead around it, 48 beads. Very nice. Then uh, if you want to, you can seal it up at the end with some of that uh, uh, polyurethane gloss coating. Thing is, once you do it, you're done. <laughs> there's no going back. And if you ever broke a bead in there, there's no fixing it. There's no way. You just give it up. You're not going to be able to do it. That is kind of the downside of doing that extra thing is additional time for a uh, Maybe some additional protection. We'll see as time goes on. I'll use this one myself. And uh, that's about it. The other thing is that there's no going back and altering anything at this point. So yeah, there's no going back. So what could we have done better? Well, we went a little bit too long on the beads. And it's not so noticeable at the bottom, but at the top, you can see the beads are projecting out a little bit there because it got too close to the lip and it started lifting it up. And that's how it goes too many beads. So I'm gonna go back and count and what I could have done if I'd wanted to is I could have say gone in here where nobody would have noticed and pulled out a row or two here and shortened it up some and it would have fit better. But I got so excited I was like yeah yeah I want it done I want to get on to the next step and you know this is where we ended up. Um, the other thing that was experimental was doing this asymmetrical um, little like a chevron here uh, instead of putting in a diamond to space in between, I thought I'd try this. Turned out all right. I don't, I don't think it's bad. Um, and then these little white pieces here. This is actually a couple of off-white beige type colored beads. I it almost didn't matter to use which ones. You certainly can't see it on the camera. You have to inspect closely to even see if there's any difference. The other thing is that with this gloss coating, it didn't really matter what the coating of the beads is, whether it's a opaque. Um, matte or a glo uh, gloss finish didn't matter you can't tell it's all sealed in so that was something interesting right there a little bit of freedom that's about it a very nice piece the other thing is that when you go on a metal blank you have to commit to a direction bottom or top in advance and uh, I wanted to have this stuff up near the top you know because uh, you generally hold it at the bottom there tons of little choices can't say yeah or nay on any one of them, but that's the only execution problem that I saw was the uh, too many beads. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so that's what it looks like in the daytime. Let's see how well she operates.
it feels really heavy in my hand with all that metal and everything and it just it's much more weighty it's more of a guy's lighter heavy and uh, clearly you couldn't use this kind of a lighter if you wanted to do frills on a thing or anything like that it has to kind of stand by itself within the framing of the blank but there's just so many advantages on this I can't imagine myself not doing a whole bunch more of these so uh, I'll find the link and for the blanks and put them where I got them on the internet. I hate to advertise for people and not get paid for it, but you know, that's how it is. This is just for fun, right? So uh, if you have any uh, questions or comments about this stuff, let me know. I'll uh, do what I can to help out. And uh, Until next time, you have a good one. Man, you'd never know it, but last night we got pounded. That rain was off the hook. Also, I want to introduce somebody to you. Louie, come on over here. I want you guys to meet Louis Eugene Goodine. Hi. Confirmed ex-father-in-law. Oh, man. Yeah. Storyteller. Yeah. Dreamer. Character. Historian. Yeah. Archaeologist. All that stuff. Yep. But to me, he's just Louie. <laughs> And he lives out on this ranch. And he puts up with me. Anyhow, here, Louie, you want to hold that up? Everybody's wanting to know why, why I just come unglued off the hook about 48. Why 48 beads for two rows on this thing? Can you guys see it? There it is. So here's the deal. I did a little graph paper here. There it is. And uh, when you look at 48... The two big numbers that go into it that, you know, you could split it any way you want to, but essentially it's 8 and 6. The 8 goes down to 4 times 2, and then 4 is 2 times 2. And 6 goes down to 3 times 2. So there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 different numbers that go into this number 48. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Wow, right? 42, what was it? It's 2 times 3 times 7. That's it. You get three numbers. Well, when you do that, you can do seven different repeating patterns with 48 beads, as opposed to two with 42. So yeah, 48 is far superior for the kind of stuff I like doing. What do you think? Yep. Now, a lot of people have been asking, do you have an Etsy for these things? No, I don't. Okay, I don't do any of that stuff. If you want to freaking figure out what the patterns are, knock yourself out, but I ain't going to try and sell them. And uh, furthermore, I don't even sell my lighters. Because if I were to sell this lighter, Louie, how much could I get for that lighter right there? Somewhere between $100 and $150. Uh-huh. In New York City, probably two and a half. Two and a half. So if I went to New York City and paid the New York overhead, $250 a lighter. Yeah. Now, how much time did it take me to make this? I don't know. Oh. That, that's each one, each one you're going to find is individual and it's going to be a different time. You're not going to be able to sit down and do these things like one every ten minutes. No. <laughs> no. I'd say all together, including the finish and everything, and it cost me about six hours of my time. Yeah. About six hours, off and on. But I had to stop what I was doing and go and put in another finish on it. So, at the top end, maybe seven, eight hours. And I made some mistakes and had to undo stuff. And you know, But if I got it right all the way through and did everything perfect, I'd say six hours. Six hours to make that lighter cover right there. And then pieces and parts, the, the materials, what do you reckon that costs? I'd probably say it's close to about three to five dollars. So, let's just say we could do top end, $250, right? Yeah. Minus five, it's negligible. Let's just call it still $240. That's all we got for six hours of work. What's that work out to? Let's see. $12 an hour. $12 an hour? Yeah. No, it's gotta be 240 divided by six, that's $40 an hour. Okay, okay. <laughs> but you yeah. know, $40 an hour, that's pretty good, right? Well, that's if you earn 
eighty thousand a year. And remember, the, uh, if we did it legit, they're going to want their taxes. They're going to want their pound of flesh from you for that too. So it's just a salary job. Call it eighty thousand dollars a year. That's if I did it eight hours a day, forty hours a week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bunch of stuff wholesale. Eighty thousand dollars a year, and that's not even counting what it cost me to sell it. Hmm. So, not too profitable. I'd like to talk about something different than profit. Uh oh. With this life. Well, now wait a second. Everybody's saying, hey, I want to make money doing this. And I'm saying, you're full of shit if you think you're going to make money doing this. Some you're going to. Yeah. But compared to what? I mean, I get paid a hell of a lot more than 80 grand a year. Yeah, you're a computer programmer. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, something like that. But that's what I'm saying, right? Yeah. You know. But what, what this does for you, man. This puts you off into another realm of thought. Your body and your mind, when you're working on these tiny little bees, and you're remembering your patterns, and you're putting it together, you're creating a Van Gogh. You're creating a painting. You create each one of them is a hell of a work of art that your soul is into. And the person who gets it, that feeling, that energy is transferred into this lighter for the person that owns it. Mm -hmm. This is what happens with beadwork. My ancestry goes back to the Algonquins and the Mohawk mm -hmm. in, in, in New England. My great-great-grandmother was uh, Lily Crooked Knife. Uh -huh. Her father was called Chief Crooked Knife. And he was, they were, they were, her, especially her, she was very important in helping the whites settle into New England. And her big thing was beadwork. Uh -huh. She did some of the most beautiful floral patterns and designs. Each item was just, just so precious. Uh, beadwork, beadwork will do a lot for your soul. I've done it for so many years, I used to do it. Too old, too shaky, can't do it anymore. But over the years when I do the rendezvous circuit, the black powder era, reenactments, mm -hmm. I would sell and trade a lot of beadwork. And I didn't do much selling. I, I did mostly trading. I'd trade a piece of beadwork for a piece of leather or, or a bone handle or, or a knife or a tomahawk. Uh, it just, this, it opens up a whole new world. If you can sit down, take the time, meditate and pray and think about what you're doing with beadwork, I'll tell you what, it'll do a lot for your soul. It'll do a lot for your well-being. When you're sitting down in the evening or sometime by yourself and you're doing beadwork, each tiny little bead, each little thread has to be done individually. There's no machine to do it. The person's got to do it, and they do it with their soul, and their mind expands and connects with the universe. That's what I see in beadwork. Oh, yeah. 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 I agree. Sometime here in the future, I'm going to tell you about my flute <laughs> and its beadwork. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's going to have to wait for another time. Yeah, yeah. But for now, I think we can both say that beading, it ain't about making money for us. I mean, we make some money. The funny part of it is, it isn't about, no, when you set out to make money, you're not going to make any. But as time goes on, you do. Uh -huh. You make a lot of money in other ways and aren't tangible. But it comes to you. It, it's like it's like the circle of life going around. You're putting this little circle together, this little pattern together. Mm. It's your soul and your imagination. And, and you're putting it out for the world to see. You're exposing it. And boy, the returns that come back are so incredible. Yeah. Things you never expected. You'll meet wonderful people. You'll have wonderful experiences just because you did some darn beating. You sat down, took the time to get out of your busy life, your horrible life, <laughs> and you did something beautiful. And you don't have to be, you don't have to be a Van Gogh or a Rembrandt to do it. Look, I've seen little kids do some of the most awesome beadwork. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so beautiful. Yeah. And especially the natives. We, in our white society, we get away from that stuff. We think, well, we can't make a million dollars. There ain't no sense in me doing it. But we, we do make a million dollars in different ways. That's what I see about it. Don't look 
It's not like you're going to get rich off dollars and you're going to set up this great big business that you're going to have to ship overseas to get things done because you need so many of them. No, do one, do two, three or four, and trade them. Trade them or give them to somebody. I'll tell you what, you give a lighter like this to a person that is sensitive, that is intelligent, and I'll tell you what, you'll get ten back from that person. You get back ten times what you could have sold it for. Well, that's why I gave you a lighter. Yeah. I gave yeah. you a lighter cover. Yeah. Hey, look, I'm already freaking gotten more than that back, huh? Yep. You want that one? No. Oh, that's right. You can't have it. I don't know who it's for. I think I'm going to have to use this one. I lost my other ones, you know. But I think I'll hang on to this one for a while and see how it wears. Oh, look at that. It got a freaking hair caught in one of those coats. <laughs> we'll see. Look at that. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. You know, I was thinking you didn't have to stop with beads. You could put little pieces of whatever in this and oh. coat them over. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All kinds yeah. of possibilities, huh? Yeah, yeah. You can draw all kinds of pictures. That one right there probably has a hundred different pictures in it, if you look at it. Yeah. And if you do something else, like maybe put a little piece of gold in with the blue here, or, or maybe right at this point put a little piece of gold. Could do anything. Or a little piece of silver. Yeah! Because with your polyurethane that you coated it with, that's going to hold it there for a lot, a lot of years. Yes, it is. It's going to stay good. And yep. it feels good, too. Yeah. feels... I've lost the sense of the beads, though. I don't know. That worries me. I really no, like no, the no, other no. lighters. No, no, you, no. You can feel the bead. No, the bead I, I understand that. I understand that. But maybe you'll make something like well, that. Well, the problem that I found is that uh, when I get those bead, beads back to repair them, there's all sorts of stuff caked in there oh, anyway. Yeah. It's kind of gross. Oh, yeah. So, I don't know. Six of one, half dozen of the other, huh? I like it like that. But, but this is the thing about our work. You do each one different. Yeah, but you know the thing is about this kind of artwork, it's not artwork you hang on the wall. It's something you carry around in your sure, pocket. Sure, and you pick it out and you look at it and you enjoy it. And you share it with people. Yeah. yeah. Everybody that sees that, oh, let me see that. They don't see things like that up there. No, they don't. They see the little pocket lighter that is nothing, you know, you throw in your pocket. You don't, most of the time you don't even feel that it's there. But this one, because of the metal case, because of the beads, it's heavy enough so you know it's there. Yeah. And if you reach in your purse, to find it, you automatically know what it is. Just feel it. You don't have to group around and say, "Oh, is that my lighter? Or is that my pen? Or it's my lighter." <laughs> I can light my cigarette. Mm. I can build my fire. I can, yeah, and I can talk and enjoy. You know, we don't enjoy the things we have in life. We we just don't so many times. But by making something, by putting your soul into it, just making it and see where it takes you. Oh, it's a hell of a journey. Yeah. Yeah. One bead at a time. One bead, one tiny, teeny little bead that I can't even hold anymore because I shake so damn much. Well, hey, Glenn, you ready to go down Spearfish Canyon? Yeah. All right. Oh, wow. We're going to go do that. You stay here and hold down the fort. I took a lady down Spearfish Canyon one time. Uh-oh. She was a senior in college. Oh. And her major was English. English. So I took her up into Bridal Rail Falls, took her way up over the mountain, down over the canyon walls, down over the cliffs, into this little brook that comes out that makes a fall, uh -huh. and there's a pool of water up there. And I showed her how to pan gold. And she found a little bit of gold. Uh -oh. It didn't matter, but she found some gold. Uh -oh. And she was so excited. She goes back to college that year and she wrote a small book about our adventure. And she made quite a little bit of money. Well, there you go. See, so that's what, you know, beating and, and, and things like that will do for you. Enrich yeah. your life. Oh, totally. Enrich it so much. <laughs> and you can't buy that shit. You can't. You can't you pay can't for it. You can't buy that shit. All right. Take her easy. We'll see you around. <laughs>